Hello again, everyone. Ambassador Terry over at What Are You Doing Year Three? And I have another fabulous guest, Ashok Bhattacharya. Ashok, welcome, my friend. Thank you very much, Ambassador Terry, for inviting me for this moment to describe something that is very close to my heart. Excellent. And, that is and we're going to ask you that question in just a moment, because uh, I know it's going to be a long answer. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the famous question, Ashok Bhattacharya. What are you doing? Well, I tell you what I'm doing today. I'm doing therapy. And I've been a therapist for over 36 years now. And to me, the function of therapy is to help people tell their story. Everybody has a story. We all have stories. In fact, we start with stories before we're born because we inherit the stories of those that come before us. We are living the story of individuals, families, culture, um, religion, the whole package. It becomes our story. And then we have the chance to shape that story to become a new story. While we're shaping our story, things happen to us, things called life. And when those things occur, they may either bring us on track or they may push us off track and it's up to us to come back. Now, I'm a psychiatrist and I'm a kind of an anti-psychiatrist psychiatrist. And what that means is that the emphasis that I have isn't in checking off the boxes to see what symptoms somebody has such that they have a mental condition that is um, repairable by medications or, or such. Not that I disagree with medications, but I think the solution to someone's issues that might be causing them grief or strife or a mental condition is also connected to that story being pushed off kilter. And by empathizing, I can join somebody's story with them. They are no longer alone. And if someone can share their story and feel like they're no longer alone, that changes their story. To have someone in their story with them, helping them to see more, but also if they're stuck, to see a way out. And I've been doing this for such a long time now, I probably kind of have gotten used to it. But let's not forget that the most important organ of empathy is our ears, our, our listening capacity to take somebody else in. You might think it's this thing that uh, gives people advice and that's great, but really listening is the most powerful thing we can do for somebody else. And I guess you could say I'm a professional listener. I guess you could say I'm a professional empathizer, but I can tell you one thing, Ambassador Terry, I am still a student of empathy. I am a servant to empathy. And when people come to see me and we interact and I'm working on empathy, I'm also teaching them how to empathize with those in their life. And when we empathize with people around us, we get something I call reciprocal empathy, which is something I've written about as well. And I think reciprocal empathy, wouldn't it be amazing if we're all actually empathizing with as opposed to at other people? That withness, I think, is a powerful inclusion especially in, when I'm working with couples who are empathizing with each other. So empathy for me is entering somebody else's experience from their perspective, not yours. That's the difference. And when you do that, you do have to momentarily leave yourself. But when you leave yourself, you hold on to yourself, you join them, then you pull yourself back to yourself, then you reflect. And by doing that, that other person has that moment of togetherness. And that moment of togetherness, oftentimes, just by itself, is healing to their soul. I'm going to leave it there for now, unless you have a question for me. You read my book, Consortium's all about the empathy and understanding your people and you're working with them, uh, you know, and getting them to understand that they have a job to do in a company, you have a job to do in a company, you're not above them or below them or anything like that. You just have different jobs. And, you know, you have two years, one mouth is the saying goes. And it's true. You know, uh, people want to love and be loved. They want to be heard. They want to be understand. They want to be acknowledged as a human being. And that's powerful. And the, the, the fact that you're doing this work, you know, we were on a live together just recently. And uh, I enjoyed you so much. I had to have you on here. And I thank you very much for doing it. The issue of also, and in agreement with what you said, is people want to belong. And when someone's had a trauma, especially a shameful trauma, they feel like they don't belong. And the power of empathy is reconnecting 
and being part of something that accepts, does not judge, and make you feel like you can belong again. That is soul healing. Excellent. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, did I say this was good? Yes, I did. Thank you so much, Ashok. This was fantastic. Bye for now. Take care. Consortium, the business model for the 21st century.